Hi, I'm James and this is your handover video for the Qashqai N-Connector spec that we've got here. This being the uh, Qashqai 2, we'll start with the new intelligent key that it has here. Um, nice uh, classy key, not too large but not too small as well, with the new Nissan logo on the, the key fob there as well. You've got lock and unlock on the, the key fob there, plus if ever you do need, there is a blade in the key that you can use in the driver's door. So now we'll have a look at the inside of the car and we can use this convenient button here to lock and unlock the car. Right, so first of all on the door here, we've obviously got our electric window switches and you can uh, shut off the, the passenger electric windows as well. And then you've got your mirrors that you can adjust. So you've got left and right selectors there and just use the arrows as you need. And if you need to, you can fold the mirrors in as well, although they do fold in when you lock the car too. So here we have the steering wheel, multifunction steering wheel, where we've got a speed limiter and adaptive cruise control now. So you just press once to activate and then you'd set like that at the speed you want to cruise at and then this button here gives you three preset distances to follow the car in front. We've got your automatic wipers here. If it's one click down from the highest position that's in auto and you've got a nice bezel there to adjust for your intermittent speed, twist the end for your rear wiper. And on the left stalk we've obviously got your indicators but also your automatic lights and the automatic main beam is now a button on the end of the stalk. Moving on to the dashboard, if I just start the car now, keeping my feet off the pedals, won't start the engine, just put the ignition on. And we've got the digital dials in this model. And with the screen in front of us here, we can use the left and right arrows just to change what is on display, if we just get rid of the warnings there. So you could have your, your drive computer, you've also got tire pressure monitor, sat nav instructions, music information, your safety features, settings and, uh, and, and back to a compass there or you can have a blank screen as well and you can actually personalize what goes inside this screen in the settings too. Um, moving on to the main large screen, if we just press the OK button there we've got our sat nav, very easy to set up your phone, all you need to do is press the telephone symbol on the screen and then go to connections, add new device and then you need to look on your Bluetooth settings of whatever phone you have and you're looking uh, for my car to appear on the screen. Select that, pair with the car and then if you want to allow the car to have your phone book you can have that in there and messages too can be read and put on the screen uh, for you as well. Right, uh, keeping on the, the main screen of the car and the dashboard here, we've got the maps, TomTom Tom maps, really good system and free updates over the air for three years. Um, and if we want to get the map on the largest screen we just press the arrow button there and then we've got destination where there's a little flag now we can search for points of interest or an address and you can put a full address in in this system as well so not just the postcode but the street name the number as well really intuitive to use one little bit of advice i always like to give my customers at handover is don't set home as home just in case something bad happens with your keys when you're out and about, you don't want a bad day to turn into a really bad day. Moving on to the audio on this car, not just the radio nowadays of course, you do have DAB as well as FM and uh, AM waves as well, but we've got a nice big button here for DAB list, DAB list. Um, now in the showroom we don't get good DAB signal, so it's only listing one channel at the moment, but we normally have about 70 to 80 channels as soon as you go outside the, uh, the showroom here. Um, and then you just pick a channel. So once you've selected your radio station, you can, you've got these pre-select uh, channels across the bottom, 1 to 6, and also 7 to 12 as well. And to program it in, you just press and hold, and then wait for the bleep. There we go, and that's it. as easy as that to, to program in a radio station. Right, so we've got the climate control here and we use this, uh, it's very simple to use, you've got dual zone temperature where you can have obviously different temperatures each side or using the sync button you can match them as well. Um, pressing auto will put the air conditioning on and get you to the temperature that you've preset. You can take the air conditioning off and on a rainy day like today it won't matter too much, obviously a hot day you might need that on to maintain the temperature you want. And then at the front here we've got the front blowers to demist. We've got the rear demister, which does your mirrors as well. Recirculate button, fan speed control, and then where you want the airflow to be directed. And you do also have the option to switch it off. 
Right, here we have the automatic handbrake. A lot of people are familiar with these nowadays, but just in case, very easy to use. The nice thing is that it's completely automatic and does the job for you, so you don't need to use it manually, but should you want to, foot on the brake and press down to disengage, and simply finger underneath to engage. But like I say, you'd never need to do that. It will disengage as you set your gas and find your biting point to drive off. And at the end of your journey, if you take your seatbelt off as the driver, open the driver's door or switch the engine off, it will apply its own handbrake. There is also this handy auto hold function. So with the amber light on, it will hold the car still when you stop in traffic or at a junction, a little white A appears as you drive along the road with this function engaged. When you come to a stop, it goes green. And that's when you know it's holding the car. So to finish off, a couple of last little features. We've got drive modes here on this toggle switch. It always starts in standard as a default. If you nudge it forward, we go into sport mode, which does weight up the steering a little bit and improve throttle response. You will use a touch more fuel. And then if you knock it back, you'll go into eco, where it does the, the opposite of that. The throttle response is extended, um, making it easier to be more economical if you're a bit heavy footed. Um, also under here we've got USB and USC sockets as well and on the back of the armrest for the rear occupants too and some handy little features there is a little shelf here that you could pop your phone on and there's also a sunglasses holder up here as well right the final thing I want to mention is just one of the car's safety features um, you may have seen before on a Qashqai or other Nissan products that when you start the car there's a bit of a disclaimer that comes up on the screen and you've got OK and cancel one of the things you're pressing OK for there is to share your direction of travel and your position as well, which is quite an important thing and could save your life one day because all Nissans now are fitted with this SOS button up here. So if you're involved in an accident, you can contact the emergency services should your phone be out of reach or not working or out of battery, something like that. But should the, the accident be severe enough, it will automatically connect you to the uh, emergency services and if you don't respond or are unable to respond, they will automatically send you help. But only if you've pressed OK on the screen um, to share your direction of travel and, uh, and your position. Right, coming to the back of the Qashqai, we've got the boot with the lovely new Nissan badge as part of the Qashqai 2 model as well. And inside on the end connector spec upwards, you get these boards in the boot that you can configure in different ways. There's actually 16 different configurations. One of the most useful I find is to put it like this. And then personally speaking, because I've got little ones, I put the buggy behind there and then my shopping bags can go here and it keeps it all neat and tidy. Another thing I like to mention on handover, something that's a little bit different on the cash guy, particularly from the old model, is that the fuel filler cap is now just released on a spring, whereas it used to be a lever. So as long as the car is unlocked, because this locks with the rest of the doors, then you can access the fuel filler cap. Um, in fact, there is no cap anymore, which is the other thing to mention. It's just on a strong spring you just put the nozzle straight in there and then it seals itself. So to sum up, that's our handover video on the Qashqai end connector. Of course, we will go through things with you when you uh, come to collect your car. And if ever you do need any help, we're always on hand. I'm sure by now you know where we are. Thanks again.